Last August, Fishman experienced one of the best school-sized bluefin tuna bites of the last decade when big numbers of 30 to 50 pound fish moved into an area south of Cape Cod. This is really encouraging to see these smaller fish like this in that 30 to 50 pound class yep. and, and in numbers. I mean, right. just listening on the radio, we've heard a lot of people catching a lot of fish out here. Yeah, what I definitely like about this is that whether you're running 20 miles, 25 miles down to Cuddy Honk and fishing in Elizabeth Islands all the way down, or coming off the backside of the vineyard, very similar locations as far as distance to run, but two definite different fisheries. Yeah, you guys that have a uh, center console and they're used to fishing striped bass and bluefish, you can use that boat, head out here, just be safe, check the weather, uh, partner up with other boats. Use a lot of the same tackle too. I mean, we're using those side riggers. You can use those for bass trolling as well, yeah. and get you out here. No real specialized equipment other than the trolling gear and uh, some spreader bars. Picked up some ballyhoo, and uh, we're into some bluefin tuna. One of the things that I think is very important is that we have two uh, nine-inch Simrad units on board here, and uh, what's nice is we've had one with the chart overlaid with the radar, which is important because we've been in and out of the fog. Yeah, if we didn't have radar, we would have been stuck at the dock this morning waiting for things to clear up. Uh, but because we had the radar, we were able to go through that little patch of it, feel safe about it, uh, get out here. And as you can see now, I mean, it has burned off and it's clear. It's a beautiful day. But it was really helpful to have that radar and get through that area of fog safely. You look at the screen right now, and, and I guarantee you that's fish on the bottom, sitting on the bottom. Yeah. And these fish right now, with the tide being what it is, all of a sudden these fish, as soon as that water starts moving, those fish will pop back up. Yeah, I mean, we're not really fishing any specific uh, structure. There's a little bit of a bottom change here, um, but it's really not, you know, it's been about 130 to 140 feet. What we're fishing right now is there's bait around and there's a temperature change. The bluefin tuna are in this kind of colder water, uh, 66 to 68 degrees. If you go a little further, you get into the warmer stuff and start to see mahi and things like that. But we stay on this cool side. That seems to be where the uh, where the bluefin are kind of stacked up right now and feeding on the sand eels. And what's nice about that is the chart will even a snail trail. That snail trail is very important. And the reason why is if we run into fish, I'm just going to hit a waypoint. And all of a sudden, you'd be surprised when you start finding fish after you fish for half a day. You really haven't gone that far from the very beginning of where you picked up the first fish. Hairball pulled up yeah. there. Hairball's he, he, on a fish. You tight? Tease him up, Matty. Tease him up. Tease him up. There he is. Oh, no. Which one went? It's looking fishy here. I know Hairball behind us just just picked up a fish. We dropped one. Larry um, is out here on the skipjack. He's already gone three for three. And these guys, next tight. one. Tight. Behind the top. You got it? Yeah, pass it down. One. You got it? Nice, nice, Matty. Nice. This is the jet all the way back. All right, well, we just hooked up not five minutes ago. And uh, we just reset the spread, went back over, went back over where we were. And uh, bam, right down again. So we're hoping to get this guy to the boat. Our producer, Matt Rissell, is actually working the cockpit today. And uh, there's a great bluefin bite here. And there seems to be one spot here that just seems to be holding him. Now, what speed are you doing? Uh, four right now. You want me to speed up or slow down? No, no, you're good. Right there, I bring it down about two or three. I'm just listening to Chris right now, and uh, he's letting me know if he needs me to slow it down so he can gain a little line on this fish or uh, keep the speed up so we keep the line tight on it, keep the hook in place. We, uh, we dropped the fish uh, about 10 minutes ago, which happened. So this time we're gonna make sure we keep the line tight, keep this fish butt. Bump it forward a little, Kev. I'm on the leader. Nice fish. He's not done yet, he's starting to spiral. 
keep it right on them. Maddie, that's about as textbook as you get going through the eyes, huh? Yeah! That's a nice fish right there, huh? It shot out this morning around 5.30. Hour run, tops out here, 15 miles south of Waski. Bluefin tuna stacked up pretty good out here. Been in the water probably about 25 minutes. We're one for two right now. I'm gonna put this guy on ice. As you can see, we're not releasing him. So the area we're fishing today, most people call it uh, south of the vineyard. It's a really big area, but if you look on a Captain Seagull map, you'll see a lot of named fishing areas. Uh, the claw, the owl, the inside fingers, the dump. These are well-known fishing areas uh, for a number of different species. It depends on when in the summer you're there and what the water temperature is. There's sharking grounds. Sometimes you'll get longfin albacore tuna that come up here, even mahi-mahi. Today, uh, we've got some cooler water. It's about 65 to 68 degrees right here and there's a great schoolie bluefin bite going on. So that's what we're doing. It's, it's a great little trip, just about 10 to 15 miles south of the vineyard. You get into lots of interesting fishing. We got Matt Rissell, our TV producer, working hard in the background here. Uh, we're trolling through some weed patches. So we just gotta keep clearing the spread. If there's weed on the lures, they're not gonna get hit. So just keep cleaning them off, setting them back out. And uh, Matt's working hard today. He's our offshore guy, he's got the experience. So took him out from behind the camera and we put him to work on the spread. So what we do normally is when you're running out here offshore and you're running five, seven, whatever it is, the first line you put out is usually the one that's going the furthest back. In this case right now, on the top of our T-top, we've got one of these Finor 50s, and on it we've got a weighted belly hue. I think we're running an Islander or a, a Joe Shoot, I think it is. So we got that all the way back. That's running back about 70, 80 yards. Off the back now, very handy. This axe is kind of a little bit of a modified outrigger. And then as I work around from the starboard to the port side, what I have on here right now, this is another Finor 50. And off of this, just in the wash, you can look back and I'll show you in a little bit. We've got a little spread of bar, we've downsized. These fish are not big, 30, 40, 50 pounds. So what we did is we downsized. Coming off the back side now, we've got a little, uh, I think it's a little bullet, tuna bullet. Coming off this, we're keeping this one real in tight. We're actually running this off of a spinning rod. It's a band stall, 250. As we swing around the boat, I'm going to have you come around this side. And behind this one right here, we have another spread of bar. This is a pink spread of bar. And behind that, we're running the valley. And so the theory behind it is that spread of bar is really kind of chicken up a lot of water. It's going to be very excitable for the fish coming from beneath. You take a look at that. If they don't lock in on something like that, what they're going to do is they're going to just behind it drop off and pick up one of the valley hoop, the rig valley hoop, which is going to be on the 30 on our tournament tackle kind of spreader that's just kicking us out an extra five feet. We're running five lines, we haven't crossed yet, we've been fishing for about an hour, and uh, let's see if we can't pick up another one. We got two marks now where we've got fish, we've seen other boats hooking up, so it seems like uh, even though we're not seeing much sign of life, no sign of tuna on top, um, they're clearly in the area. So we're just gonna keep using the GPS, narrowing down, watching the temperature, and uh, try and figure out where these fish are and how we can stay on top of them. Now, Kevin, when we went over those, did you notice anything on the screen? I'm going to go ahead and... Coming down to you. Kevin, I'll take the wheel. You're on the fish. Thank you, Matt. Boy, they all seem to be right in the same spot. Yeah, yeah, right in that same area. Big belly, who that was on there? Yeah, it was. Yep, you're out of here right now. Just get ready to reel down on him. When he starts going under the boat, I'm just gonna nudge it around. All I wanna do is just keep circling him. He's almost done. Don't go too high now, stick down the ego. Just low, low pumps now. That's perfect, yeah. Tell me when you got color again, we're out of gear. Here he comes, there's color. He's probably got one more, two more small runs in I'm not talking a lot, I'm breathing a little heavy right now. Okay. Color. All right, you can't go any further in a second. He's, he's circling right now, Kevin. He's almost done. One more and I'll, I'll get him from there. We're not going to gap this guy, so he's going to put him in. We're going to guy. Nice job, Brad. I'm going to leave it When they start circling like this, it's pretty much their sign that they're done. And so what we'll do is 
we're gonna pop this guy off before he uh, gets too spent. We already got one in the box, this guy's gonna be released. Right now I'm leading this fish, not a big fish. So when you put the rod back on the rod holder, pull the drag down because sometimes these fish will all of a sudden, especially the big fish, will butt and take off. You don't want that drag socked all the way up because that's where the thing just snaps off. So this fish is doing real well. I'm gonna bring it back up. <laughs> Grab the tail. Yeah, there you go. Alright. Okay. Ready? I got the front if you want. Here you go, Kevin. There you huh? go, huh? Good looking fish. Nailed that uh, ballyhoo right there that we were trolling along. We're gonna get him unhooked real quick, get him back in the water. You can see how nice and bright and lit up and healthy he is. Oh. Chris, let's pop that hook yeah, out and get him in. It. There we go. Okay, when you let him go, we're gonna torpedo him straight down. Yeah, he's good, he's kicking. There Guys, you go. you're watching On the Water TV, Angling Adventures, Chris Megan, Kevin Blinkoff, not 15 miles south of the vineyard. These schooly bluefin are all over the place. Right now we're doing a troll, but shortly we're gonna switch over, see if we can't get them on some light here. All right, I'm gonna get this guy back in, let him swim away healthy. There we go. Awesome. Wow. Let's get him back to the captain. Give him a little push. Boy, it's great to see these guys just snap off like that. So we got some nice, uh, some nice fish in this area, all within about a quarter mile of each other. All mm -hmm. of our marks, Kevin, have been within a quarter mile. Yeah, we've been each. able to use the chart plotter to kind of key in on where the fish are and see where the other boats are hooking up. And we kind of narrowed it down to this area that must just be a lot of sand eels in the area that are keeping them around. We're not seeing anything on the surface, no whales, no real bird life, but... Uh, We're gonna try to head back out to the fleet. We drifted away a little bit fighting that fish. Guys, when you come back, we hope to have the spread back out there and one of these rods bending over again. On the spinning. On the, on the bar. Nice. We're gonna have to clear quick because it's running out of line, Chris. Hey guys, welcome back. Right now we got a little well on the action. We're running tandem with one of our partner boats here, uh, Larry uh, Backman on board the Skipjack. Our producer fishing with him, Matty Rissell fishing with him an awful lot. At about eight and a half knots. Been a little bit of a lull. The radio seems to have fallen off, and usually that's a telltale sign, Kev, that uh yeah, we had a lot of guys this morning going three for four, five for six. Uh, there's a lot of tuna in the area. We had a pretty good bite this morning uh, when we first got out here, but I don't know if the tide has slowed and we just got to wait for it to pick up again, but we'll see if it does so in a couple hours. Kevin, yeah, that was tight. And the, oh, the other one went off too. It's tight on one. Man, that was right where we went through. Well, the skipjack just hooked up. They got the bed rod. It looks like Julia Hoffman, who's kind of new to this whole bluefin tuna bite, is on the rod. But that's what's so cool about this schooly bluefin bite. You can get out here, 30 to 50 pound fish. It's doable. You can get out here, you can fight them, you can land them, you can release them. And it's, it's great for anyone who's new to the game, um, for anglers who are just getting started into catching tuna. It's kind of like a bridge to then doing more and more offshore fishing. And uh, we're going to circle back around see if we can't show you what it's like for you know Judy to uh, fight this fish on the back of the skipjack. Larry's come kind of still in the water there. Good job. 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 Good Brought it in. He's probably had them probably his seven fish today. It's good to see they've turned back on. Uh, we, we saw them get a knockdown and, and miss a fish, and then what, two minutes later they hooked up with that one. Yeah. So, Real green, launched it off the backside. Another schooling bluefin on board the skipjack. We've got to get OTW back in the game. We've had a little lull here. You know, all sorts of boats raise fish. And uh, the down east style boat that he has with the um, big diesel in it, crews are very different than ours. So, you're out here, you got a set of console, find your speed, you'll, you'll know. Just take heart of when you knock down a fish. Was it six and a half knots? Was it seven knots? It's more often than not, that speed that you find is what's gonna pick up fish. Yeah, like Maddie was saying earlier, it's, uh, it's keeping an eye on the spread, watching how the spreader bars are swimming, making sure that they look good in the water. That's more important than the exact number of what speed you're going. But uh, typically for these bluefin, they seem to like it fairly fast. We're somewhere between uh, 
seven to nine knots for the yeah. most part. And um, that seems to be working, but just make sure things look good in the water and look natural and they're swimming well. Oh, we got fish busting right ahead of us. Right here, look at it. Tight, Tight baby! Get in there, spinning! Did you see it race across? How awesome was that, huh? Ballyhoo. They're eating the ballyhoo today. They want meat. The weighted ballyhoo in the far back, and all of a sudden, guy came back up. Wow, it's so awesome on the spinning. You gotta love the spinning rod. This is a Vanstall 250. This is more than up for the task. The only thing I was a little nervous of is when it was starting to strip line there when we were still in gear. But it's perfect to add to a trolling spread, especially when you're on fish this size. You wouldn't do this if we were into the big guys, but Kev, you're good right there. Okay, let me know if you need anything. Yeah, we got some color. And if you want me to lead them, just let me know. I've gotten real good at it. <laughs> I've already had one shot. So glad we stuck it out and uh, we were waiting all day hoping one of the spinning rods would go off. We got some nice color. <laughs> Guys, one of the things that these fish will do when they kind of let you know that it's time to come in, they'll start doing that kind of tuna spiral there. That's kind of a way of their saying, uh, hey, I'm ready to come in, please let me go. If you're not going to take it. We took one fish for the table. That's all we needed. Kev said it earlier. Most of these fish in the past years have been east of Chatham. Right now, they're south of the vineyard. When you hit the hooter, you go another eight, ten miles past that and you're into these fish. This guy's already smoked. The button in the corner, we want to make sure we get a quick release on him. Oh, okay. Kev, I'm going to walk him over your shoulder. Perfect. Wow, that was so much easier. Nice. Look at that, Kev. All right, yeah, if you want to come pop this hook out, Chris. I'm going to. Let me come, to come up there. Into the boat. I'm just going to keep an eye out for a Mako shark. <laughs> Kev, what a day of fishing, huh, buddy? Yeah, there you go, Kev. Kev, beautiful day of fishing. Look at that. Beautiful. Guys, spin fishing for bluefin. This guy came up, smoked it. Oh, about our fifth, fourth or fifth fish. We're going to let him go. He's real green. Ready? Let's get him back in the water. Let's give him a little push. That was awesome. Natty jumped up there, tried to drop it back, teased it up. The thing must have followed it up because it immediately jumped over to the other ballyhoo. I'm sure that was the same fish. Let's see if we can't rig this. We had a little bit of a troll left, and then we're going to try to get out of here. Fishing just south of the vineyard, guys. We're gonna get one more. The lull in the action didn't last long. When the tide turned, the tuna bite turned on as well. Tight, tight, baby! That's a spinner, Kev, get on it! Yeah, Kev! On the bar. Nice. And keep. On the bar. Quick, because it's running out of line, Chris. All right, I am, I am down. I am down. I'm down. I'm out of gear. I think that last fish did us a favor by running sideways. This fish went straight back. Figured that we could use a couple extra lines, so we rigged these up. And this is our second fish now in the spinning gear, and it is it's a lot of fun. Okay, if you go to the back, I'm gonna yep. just come right up that side, clear this thing, guys. One thing that's great about this tournament contender 25, we have. 12 rod holders, six up the starboard, six up the port side, which gives me a clean deck to land this fish. These have been between 30 and 50 pound bluefin that we've been landing today. Out here, schoolie bluefin. It's the perfect size for a rod and reel like this. I mean, you can handle bigger fish, but this is a lot of fun. Now, fighting a big fish like a tuna on spinning gear, I've learned not to try and use my arms, because I don't have the arms to do this, but if I use my whole body, lean back to lift the rod up, and then reel down fast. And then the last thing you want to do is just hold the rod and let the fish rest while you rest because that's how they get their strength back. And that prolongs the fight. Kev, I'm out of gear right now. All right. Kev's doing a good job on this. This went down on the uh, pink spreader bar. Yeah, we got a light spreader bar. Small enough that we're able to fish it on the spinning gear. Kev, if he makes a dart to the other side, just let me know and, uh, and I'm watching you. I'll just keep him on that side. How much more fun is that on that spinning gear? You can't beat this fight. This Yep, here we go, we got color on them. As soon as you see your swivel, let me know, okay? Yep. If he goes towards the boat, lean him over on that side. I got the gloves on, there so. That's so cool, oh. seeing him take off right there. That is fun. 
If the angler picks a corner and he likes that corner that he's in, Kev's in a clean corner right now. We have no debris on this side. Keep this tuner in there. He's right there. I'm going to come in on him. Oh, yeah. Coming right in. Here we go. Beautiful fish, huh? A little football right there. Kev, you got him? I'm going to pop this thing out. Right next to his face. We'll pop that guy out. Got him out. He's Got clean him out. right now. Got our van stall set up. Put that little spreader bar. He's a little, he's a little, he's a little football, huh? Oh, huh? yeah. It's a fun size. We're going to get him back in and let him swim away. See him kick him where he's going. See him swim away. Okay. All right, I like this now. Here we go. We're back in the game. We got six lines back out. Maddie's rigging up a couple of uh, ballyhoo. I think we're down to our last two ballyhoo. Boy, it's been nonstop action this afternoon. Starting around 3 o'clock, it's just been, if you can keep the lines in the water, it's been on, on, on. We're going over a whole school of tuna right there. It just seems to be uh, around this temperature break that for whatever reason, that's what's concentrated the food and that's what's got the tuna in the area. Is that what you saw before, Kev? Marks like that in the yeah. 30 to 40 feet range? I think it's mostly bait and sand eels, but there's some bigger marks in with it, and it's a good sign. We've been seeing bait down on the bottom, 120. Fish on, fish on. Oh! Did that break? No, it's still there. The bird flew up in the air when the uh, fish popped off. Well, as I was just saying, we're marking that bait. We were marking it earlier all on the bottom. Now it's about 40 feet down, so uh, it's a short trip for them to rock it up to the top and uh, hit the spreader bars, hit the ballyhoo. Tight, tight. It is just on. <laughs> it is on right now. Huh? Oh, he's going across the spread. <laughs> oh, he, he is going across the spread. This is a fish. This is a fish. The bait, these fish in the bait were all up around 30, 40 feet. So the sand eels are kind of rising up off the bottom. That's what these fish are feeding on. And the, uh, the tuna are up high enough in the water column now that they're coming up to check out our spread. And I'm just going to try and keep the boat, Chris, to keep your fish off the corner here. That's perfect. Let me know if you need anything. Thank you. That's perfect. I got color. He just saw the boat. Look at him take off right here, right here. Kevin, that, stop right there. He's coming yep. back at the boat. That's perfect. Right there, Kevin. Kev, just knock a little, uh, not, not much, but just push it ahead a little bit. Thank you. Here's the leader right there. You got right, the gloves? You come in and grab him. This fish is just a beast. Look at that, huh, Kev? I got him this time. Oh, he's wrapped himself. Oh, nice, that was a tough fish. Nice. A great day fishing for bluefin tuna, just 15 miles south of uh, Martha's Vineyard. Schooly bluefin up to 40 pounds. How much fun was this? This was awesome. I'm going to get this guy back in and let him kick away. Let's get him back in the water. You have an awesome day, man. Guys, if you'd like to learn more about today's show, log on to onthewater.com. And Kevin Blinkoff, Chris Megan, thanks for tuning in.